review of Chris Carter's book Science and Psychic Phenomena, The Fall of the House of Skeptics. The undead house of skeptics is just fading away. Once upon a time there was a secular humanist who spent much time practicing self-worship, as they always do. With the name of Paul Gertz he published Prometheus books which championed diverse sexual perversions like pedophilia and zoophilia as a fun time that everyone should enjoy. But sales were not good and in an extended session of self-adoration, the secular humanist Paul Gertz decided it was the peasants' many thought crimes, their superstitions like pondering higher callings, morals, religion, holy books, God, the meaning of life that were holding back the sales of his sexual perversion books. He hit upon the idea of an organization, a public lobby group, to be called CSICOP, which could easily scientifically discredit dangerous superstitions, like astrology for example, which could set the peasants free from their intellectual blindness, on the path toward self-righteous sexual perversionism, as a revolutionary new scientific age of reason, and his naughty book sales would skyrocket. The first great battle, of his own choosing, on his own battleground with his own weapon of choice. Statistics, he set out to utterly discredit astrology. It would be a cinch, he thought. But instead he suffered a stunning defeat at the hands of astrology. Some French astrologer knew more about statistics than scientific Balkert. Mars effect was established for elite athletes. This is where Chris Carter's book begins. Fall of the House of Skeptics. He records how it fell seriously wounded in its first public battle, and desperately tried to cover up this embarrassment. The book details how a whistleblower made public the criminal nature of the House of Skeptics, and that first major traumatic reversal caused these pseudo-skeptic secular humanists to renounce real science as just too scary, and spend the next 40 years simply making a propaganda war on all things intangible that the peasants subscribed to, that stopped them buying perversionism books. Chris Carter then documents how CSICOP heaped derogatory rhetoric on particular size scientists for decades in a fashion that curiously resembles malicious talking. Parapsychology is the only science that is faced with the self-appointed vigilante opposition, which has had, laughing out loud, the opposite effect, actually boosting parapsychology. From Chris Carter's excellent account, the skeptics' rhetorical objections have all been incorporated into experimental safeguards and telepathy is unambiguously proven. Chris Carter discusses the proof for telepathy and precognition in some depth, providing numerous references from leading light scientists. And the forever undead Susan Blackmore reveals her sad affliction, that she is beyond that critical dullness point so that she cannot perceive her own incompetence, like, apparently, all the others in the house of skeptics. Psychologists, academic bottom feeders just can't do any other course at uni. Their grades are too low. Even Richard Wiseman is revealed by Chris Carter as not knowing maths and science, as his work is corrected by the remedial maths teacher, Dean Radin, so that even Wiseman unwittingly, and quite accidentally, proves the existence of telepathy. Chris Carter also explains how telepathy and precognition actually fit in comfortably with modern science. Entire chapters devoted to this. A useful reference book is this. If you want to see overall the House of Skeptics' atrocious behavior toward science and society generally, play there, read this book. The skeptics crashed badly in their first operation, went from bad to worse, as the decades went by have been left behind and utterly irrelevant by the scientific method, while the superstitious peasants happily carry on doing their usual telephone telepathy and precognition, now scientifically proven. I thought Chris was just too polite and too kind describing the delinquent behavior of pseudo-skeptics. He is such a balanced prisoner. Such a gentleman. Quite a few little unexpected gems I found in this delightful book. Like Charles Darwin, having a strong interest in medium. Likely he was also laughing out loud at skeptics, who isn't? Many thanks Chris, for a most enjoyable read. Your book is a landmark work. Recommended reading.